Dr. Harlan Kilstein is back, as promised, to give us the benefit of his considerable know-how in the area of marketing and what it takes to achieve the success you deserve on today's episode of the Essential Coaching Skills Podcast. You are listening to the Essential Coaching Skills Podcast, a show devoted to uncovering the systems and the secrets that set the best apart, where you learn how to take your coaching clients to the next level while you grow the coaching practice of your dreams. So sit back and relax, or sit up and get excited. Either way, you might want to pay attention. This could be important. All right, welcome back, Dr. Harlan Kilstein. Thanks so much for being here on the Essential Coaching Skills Podcast. I always have a good time with you. And maybe, perhaps... At least one person will learn one thing. Now, our topic for today... Oh, why don't you tell everybody? (laughs) Yeah. Well, hold on there. That's my line. Our topic for today, (laughs) Harlan Kilstein, is how do coaches make money? So let me just back up a little bit. The, the, The purpose of the Essential Coaching Skills Podcast is to basically do two things. One is to help people get access to essential coaching skills so that they become great coaches and get good responses. And that's, of course, going to help anybody's business to be good at what you are doing is going to help anybody's business. And there's an awful lot of people who think that, you know, once I've gotten my coaching certificate or whatever, then people will just know and build a you know, beat a path to my door and I'll, I'll be successful in coaching, whatever. And it just doesn't seem to work that way. So they, then they, they get a website and, okay, now it'll be good. And it still isn't quite uh, what they'd hoped for. And When, you, when I left it. education, I opened up a hypnosis practice. Mm-hmm. I had been involved and studied NLP pretty much shortly after it came out. While I was in high school, I was already learning about NLP. And we were talking 1975, 1976. How how did you happen to come upon it back then? Um, I just heard about it then. um, From who? uh, From a friend of mine, uh, who you know, Menachem Kasdan who was one of the early trainees. Very early. And so it's it's been quite a journey. So I went into education, not into coaching, not into hypnosis, and I ended up doing hypnosis as like a, a side gig on weekends. But when I decided to go full time, I went in to a franchise, which probably no longer exists, called Positive Changes Hypnosis. And we learned that most hypnotists and most NLP practitioners were not making money. As a matter of fact, they were wide open schedules. They discovered that they would make more money by teaching hypnosis than by doing hypnosis. And I remember when I opened up my hypnosis office, complete with full marketing uh, press, um, we were doing really big numbers and found just how bad people were. People would start lining up to come to me to ask me for jobs. Now, back then, we did a lot of advertising and spent a lot of money on advertising. Sometimes I can't even believe how much I spent on advertising. And and for the record, the advertisements you were buying were newspaper ads back then. Newspaper and radio. Okay. But social media did not exist. Right. As a matter of fact, websites barely existed. I think I put up my first website in the year 2001, 2002, and it was about NLP. Um, today, thanks to social media, none of that is necessary. So if you think he's going to say, all right, everybody start advertising your website. We're going to teach you about Facebook advertising, Google advertising, YouTube advertising. Let me just tell you, 
that you can have a lucrative practice by simply posting to social media. And though that's the big message. So now let's talk about just posting to social media. What works? What doesn't work? Number one is that each platform, I'll use the word, has a pulse of its own. What's going to work on YouTube may not work on Facebook, may not work on Instagram, may not work on TikTok, may not work on Twitter. You need to be plugged in to each different type of social media. And with your permission, I'm going to um, go through them. My permission? I'm, I'm on the edge of my seat. Yes, you have my permission. Go, go, go. Okay, let's start I'm with this. I'm taking notes here just by the way, because I'm not good at this either. So I'm going to go. Let's start with Facebook. Let me just say without any fear of contradiction whatsoever that um, there are friends of mine who without doing any paid advertising at all are doing seven, even eight figures a year on without paying a dime on advertising. No, to be fair, they're not coaches, are they? Making that kind yes, of they're, they're, they are they are coaches. Making um, seven figures? And they are making seven figures. All right. So let's okay. talk about that. Turning up the volume here. Go ahead. Right. So let's talk about that. First of all, number one is a lot of the people that I have met, most of the coaches that I have met are extremely well-meaning and caring professionals. And that given the opportunity, they can really help people with their problems. But people have a lot of money, guilt stuff on their mind. And they do not believe in charging what they are worth. They undercharge. And if they hear that someone can't afford their rates, okay, well, what can you afford? Because they want to give so much. That's the best way to go out of business. Oh, this is a painful conversation, but please continue. So the first thing is that you need to be reading, even before getting started, you need to be reading mindset books about mean? charging. Mindset. For example, yeah, go ahead. For example, Stuart Wilde. Um, what are the the the, the um, um, Stuart Wilde has a bunch of mindset books. Um, which is the best thing about money is having some, I think is one of them is one of my favorites. Um, and here was a beautiful spiritual man, but rooted to the fact is that if clients aren't going to pay you, you aren't going to be around to service them. Mm. And that's going to be a tragedy. You have a right as a coach who has invested the time in training themselves and becoming good at what you do to live a comfortable life without feeling guilt that I charged someone. There are experts in different fields who have no problem with charging. I remember way back in the 80s, Richard Bandler was charging $5,000 a session. He wasn't charging by the hour. He charged by the cure. And I remember a case where um, Richard went to work on someone that, again, our friend Menachem brought to him. Um, and Richard charged $5,000 to cure a person of his OCD for hand washing. And Richard worked with the guy for like 
two and a half hours until the guy was done and the OCD was gone for good. And one of the things about charging more for your money is that people have an investment in your services. And because they are paying, they are more motivated to succeed. So if you go to somebody and they charge you like, hey, okay, just give me 10 bucks and there's no organization in back filling in, they're not going to value your work. On the other hand, if you charge them 250, if you charge them $1,000 an hour, believe me, they're going to be more invested. I remember years and years ago, some of you guys know that one of Erickson's top students was um, Sid Rosen, who wrote My Voice Will Go With You, who collected Erickson's stories and published them. And many, many years ago, I went to see him in New York. And I remember back then, and this is a very, very long time ago, he was charging, I think, $450 an hour. Wow. And I paid it. I didn't go, okay, look, how about a dollar twenty-five? You know, I went there with full expectations. And, and to be clear, Sidney Rosen is a was a is a is a was a psychiatrist. Psychiatrist, right? yes. He would be par- charging that like f- every week, right? For people, this well, is every every hour, not just every week. Yes. But I know, but it wasn't like he was he was expecting people to come in and fix it, something like, like Richard Bandler did with the OCD. Richard, I, I saw him one time and. I know, but that's not the expectation for Sidney Rosen. Right. 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 He's 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 a psychiatrist. I'll see you next Tuesday. It's the same time. You went in there for a one off, but that's unusual. Yeah. For him. Right. right. But my, my point is that I didn't see Sidney Rosen saying, Is that okay that I charged you that amount of money? Do you want me to cut it? Should right. I lower it so you can afford it? But my point also is is Harlan, to be fair, is that um coaches like when i do coaching with people i i talk to them every week when, right. when i have a coaching relation with some of the it's it's different than a sort of therapeutic relationship but somebody's coming to me for for ocd or for havening or i mean for for um a session where i would do havening like a, a phobia or something like that then that is a one off and that certainly I, i'll charge whatever you know i, I can I can get for that because it is amazing that changes people's lives in a session. Um, but for me, that's different than, than the coaching relationship. So, okay. so in the coaching relationship yeah. is I do not believe that people should work by the hour. Okay, I good. think that they should put together a package. And this is what I learned back in the hypnosis days of um, of a number of sessions mm-hmm. and say, hey, I'll, I'll work with you for a month for four sessions for eight seventy seven, nine seventy seven, mm-hmm. um, and get paid up front. Okay. Get paid up front and the person can use their sessions, whatever. Maybe it'll be four weeks in a row. Maybe it'll be spaced out. But sell the package, don't sell the individual session. When you sell the package, what you're really doing is you're committing yourself to your patient slash client. Yeah. Like, I'm going to be here for you. I want you to be here for you as well. Not like, okay, is the person going to show? When they've paid, they've made a demonstrable commitment to work with you. Got it. Could I ask you another quick question? The um, Stuart sure. Wilde book. Are there any other books like that besides Stuart Wilde book that you would also recommend? Um, mindset books. Um, there's a book. First of all, there's a great book on negotiations called Never Split the Difference. Never Split the Difference. I don't remember the the author. Okay. Um but it's about it's by somebody who was on the FBI uh, negotiating team, oh, wow. and he 
talks about negotiating tactics. Okay. All of this presupposes that the person themselves is good with that. And there are people, by the way, who charge things like um, it's routine that when I run a program for people, I and other people, um, I'll do six weeks with them for $5,000. And as a matter of fact, I'll even do a group program where I'm working with a bunch of people, but there's no difference working with a bunch of people, working with one-on-one. When people hire me, that's typically what I will do. And they get what they come for. Okay. So So any any other books uh, for mindset that you'd recommend? Oh, gosh. Let's go take a look at the... um, Besides Stuart Wilde. um, Well, first of all, let's see. Um, books on coaching. Let me just on, 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 on money mindset. Money mindset. Okay. Sorry, I'm not curious. Just curious, just because um, I, I I read that Stuart Wild book a long time ago. I, I don't. I mean, I would I I will get it and happily reread it. But I just was wondering if there's something else, as well. Okay, so the name of that book is. Um, the trick to money is having some. Okay. The trick to money is having some. Okay. Um, there's a book by Michael Zapersky called The Elite Consulting Mind. The Elite Consulting Mind, 16 Proven Mindsets to Attract More Clients, Increase Your Income, and Achieve More Success. Can, can you spell Zipersky? Z-I-P-U-R-S-K-Y. The Elite. The it? Elite Consulting Mind. Consulting Mind. Okay, great. Thank you. Now, a book that many of my friends rave about yeah. is called, simply called Mindset by Carol Dweck. Got it. And one more, this one's a little tougher, but a great book called The Wealth Mindset. Okay. Understanding the Mental Path to Wealth. And who's the author of that book? Um, Neville Goddard, G-O-D-D-A-R-D. Thank you. Now, I will spend a heck of a lot of time also listening to... Uh, books. I have to tell you that I'm going to recommend a book about um, it's about consulting, but it applies to coaching. And this is not this is a very, very serious business book. That's one of the best books I've ever read. Really? And it's called Value Based Consulting by Alan Weiss. Now you can look at the book and go is he crazy? Because the book is not, I think it's like 50 bucks or something like that. Let me assure you, it's worth every penny you will pay for it. Okay. Value-based consulting. I turn and I look here and it's certainly on my shelf. Um, It's a great, great book. And one more thing. One more thing. This is a new book. And it's called a Hun- The 100 M Offers. 100 M Offers by a man by the name of Alex Hormozzi. H O R M O Z I. And Hormozzi's subtitle to that book is How to Make Offers So Good. People feel stupid saying no. <laughs> okay, good. So let's go back to you were telling us about social media. So okay. how the heck can a person make a six or amazingly seven figure business posting on Facebook and TikTok? Are you serious about TikTok? And very, very different from, than Facebook. Okay. I, I, let's I, I confess I know nothing Facebook. about these things. So please go. Let's let's go to Facebook. Okay. 
So I have a post on, uh, by the time you guys look for it, it'll probably be long gone on the Facebook feed. But there is, I'm, I'll, I hope you don't mind. I'm going to read a Facebook post and you'll get an example of it. Okay. Not because I'm just so, whatever. Here's a, a new one. Okay. And um, there were, this is, this is one of my Facebook posts. It was inspired by a copywriter by the name of John Conroy. There was an up and coming piano virtuoso by the name of Daniel Steibelt, who challenged Beethoven to a musical duel to see who was a better musician. As the challenger, Steibelt got up to play first. As a dramatic gesture, he took the sheet music for his own composition, Storm Rondo, and threw it on the floor before launching into a powerful, improvised version of the piece. After he finished, the entire room erupted into loud applause, blown away by the masterful performance. But then it was Beethoven's turn. As he approached the piano, Beethoven took the scattered sheets of music and placed it on the piano upside down. <laughs> and using the inverted notes, he performed his own improvised version of the piece that was filled with complex intricacies and embellishment and delivered with such emotion and intensity that he made Steinbelt's, Steinbelt's composition sound like something he had himself created, all with zero preparation. Beethoven's mind-blowing performance caused such an insane reaction from the audience that there could be no doubt as to the clear winner. In fact, Steibelt was so humiliated by this defeat that he vowed never to return to v Vienna as long as Beethoven lived there. Now, while this story... Now, while this story um, sounds like it must be a weird and wonderful anomaly in music history, these musical duels were quite common at the time. And though it seems surprising to us now, they would always revolve around these great composers' improvisational skills. Today, copywriting, which is what I'm talking about, has been reduced to formulas and templates. And that's why I'm so caught up in a model I'm currently teaching because it enables you to have a two-way conversation and reduces resistance. A year or two from now, everyone will be using it. But right now, the only way to learn it is by joining my training when it starts up again in May. If you are interested, type me. And let me talk about that. Now, every post should have a picture. The picture attracts attention. Sure. In this case, um, my picture was a Peanuts cartoon that has Schroeder playing the piano and Lucy leaning over, looking at him and saying, I'm looking for the answer to life, Schroeder. What do you think is the answer? And Schroeder screams, Beethoven. <laughs> Beethoven is it, clear and simple. Do you understand? And then there's a picture of him like pounding out some lines of Beethoven and Lucy going, good grief. Now, that post got a bunch of people to say me. Analyzing the post is, first of all, number one, it's a story. People love stories. Mm -hmm. If you're here and you've studied NLP with Doug or you know about NLP, you know that Erickson did a lot of his work through stories and metaphors. They make people stop and read. Notice I didn't say, um, I'm teaching a new form of copywriting. If you'd like to learn it, type me. And even with a picture, it wouldn't do very well. Hmm. You need to draw the person in. I can hear you saying, but Harlan, I don't know any stories. <laughs> okay. So go ahead and think back of things that occurred in your life. I remember um, posting stories about one of the best stories that I ever posted 
was about how me being an arrogant young whippersnapper, uh, my family arranged for me to play chess with my uncle who lived next door when we had a summer house in Connecticut. My uncle had been a grandmaster. Mm -hmm. And I went next door. And of course, being the precocious genius that I was, um, went and took my piece and moved it forward, going, oh, watch, I'm going to get him in the four move checkmate. And I move my pawn to king four. And he goes, why did you do that? And I go, what do you mean? Why did I do that? He goes, why did you do that? He puts my piece back. He said, you can't do that unless you can explain why you move that piece. Well, I moved that piece because I had a start. It's my, I'm white. You go first. Okay, but why did you make that move and not this move or that move or this move? Uh, because I wanted to be in the center of the board. Okay, great. He matches me. I make the next move. Why did you do that? It wasn't much fun that <laughs> way. But I understood that he was trying to teach me something. And I learned to play chess. So here's a story. The picture was a little kid playing chess against an older person. And I went on to explain the connection between playing chess and whatever I was offering at the time it was one of my best responses. Now, why do I ask people to say me? If you say, please message me, they're probably not going to do it because it's too much effort. But if you say, type me, you're going to get a bunch of me's. Gotcha. So this is like in the comment section of this Facebook post. Uh, in in the comment section. And then to each person who typed me, I will say, hey, Doug, thanks for responding. But you always change it. And on Facebook, never copy and paste. Like, don't write out one answer and copy and paste. Because Facebook thinks that the only people who copy and paste are spammers. Mm -hmm. So I will say something like, hey, Doug, thanks for typing me. May I send you a private message? Or it might be, hey, Doug, haven't heard from you in a long time. Um, can I send you a private message? Um, or I just sent you a private message. You might have to look in your, since we're not friends on Facebook, you might have to look in your, you know, message requests uh, folder. Yeah. Um, but then I get a dialogue going. I may get them onto a Zoom call, give them my schedule. Um, and not everybody follows through all the way, but essentially this is the way people do it um, and get them into some kind of a program, whether it's eight weeks or whatever it is. Typically, you know, the first question that people are going to ask you is, how much is it? Right. And the answer to that is not to quote them, how much is it? Because you don't know what they need. You know, if somebody comes to you and says, hey, Harlan, I bite my fingernails and I really don't want to bite my fingernails because they don't taste very good or because I <laughs> just had, I just had, um, you know, my mouth done and the dentist said that if I bite my teeth, I'm going to crack my uh, new dental work. So I need to stop. I'll say, you know what? Um, uh, nail biting? Uh, I'm going to guess one session, maybe two sessions. You got to find out what they want and, and your track record. The truth of the matter is most of my nail biting sessions is just one session and straight Ericksonian pattern interrupts, change the pattern in which they bite their nails and um, a million other things. Um, I look at um, how, do you make, how do you make seven figures doing this though? Harlan? Um, because you get a lot of people. The way to make seven figures is not, is by working with people in groups. Okay. Now, let's say you have a program 
that is um, six weeks long. Okay. At the end of the six weeks, what you want to do is you want to sell them on some kind of continuity because you don't want people to lose the change that they've made with you. So you can invite them to continue working with you in a mastermind. And a mastermind might be $1,000 a month. Um, and if people had a really good experience with you up front, they are very, very likely to continue. That is where the money is. So when people are saying, you know, I'm in a mastermind that costs um, $30,000 a year, it means that someone is dinging their credit card every month for probably around $2,800 a month to get that kind of uh, a number. Okay. Some people do payment in full. It's so just... what are what are some strategies for using other forms of social media? Okay. So um on YouTube, um what you would like to do is at the end of your YouTube video, when you give quality, you invite people who would like to work with you, or in a podcast, you invite people to work with you, get an easy domain um, that people can um, remember. And it might be talk with Doug O'Brien. And all you need on that domain is a form, either a Google form or a, a Wufu form, where people fill their information and schedule a time with you. That would be a great strategy for YouTube. YouTube is working extremely well for people. Now, so what happens is so so the, 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 the more content you put on YouTube, yeah. the more people are going to get to know you, and they're more likely to sign up with you because they've come to know you through your videos. Okay. So on the videos themselves, you like the, as you're closing. Yes, you don't have to do. Well, I only have two spaces left. Sign up right now. Go to the link that you see right there and get one of the only two. Okay. That stuff is, 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 um, is likely to make everybody uncomfortable. Mm. But on the other hand, if you say, if you've enjoyed these videos and you would like to explore working with me, at no obligation at all, click on the link that you see below this video. You can even have the link come up on the video and they click it and they go to like work with Doug or talk with Doug or consult with Doug and, um, and they fill out the form. And after a while, when you start generating content, those forms are going to start coming in. Cool. So you, Facebook, Posts that inspire do well. If you don't think that you have stories, like nothing in your life is ever worth talking about, yeah. go into a bookstore, go to the chicken soup for the soul section, pick up a book, and you will instantly have 10 million stories that you can use. So you could just t take those stories and write a Facebook post. Yeah, adapt the story. Adapted. You'll find something like that may jog your memory. Oh, yeah, something like that happened to me. Or people write about commonplace things, right. um, such as this morning, I went to go help out an organization. That, true story. I went to go help out an organization that wanted to use a projector to project a video, and nobody knew how to use it. And they called me up and they said, okay, you're the expert. Come in and do it. So I went in and everything was all set up for me. And I looked for it. I looked through it. And I could not connect their projector to the computer. They did not have the right adapter. Mm, no, that's a problem. Ran out, went to Office Depot, found the right thing, connected it and worked. Now, you can take something like that and spin it into, if you've tried 
um, working with someone before and you didn't get the results, maybe you had the wrong connector. And instead of running to Office Depot, maybe you should give me a call and find out whether it's a fit. Okay, cool. And then I got home, by the way, and had my fancy new hard drive that didn't connect, and I had to go out and order an <laughs> adapter for it. So this is the story of my life today. I have this new hard drive that's going to put everything in one place, except it doesn't work yet with my computer. It will come. Well, okay, now let's talk, about, let's talk about TikTok. All right, yeah, let's talk about TikTok. Okay. So, so we have to learn. To no do. one goes to TikTok and succeeds by teaching on TikTok. I, I will admit, I know very, very little about TikTok. I've probably. Me too. Um, Me too. How long are TikTok videos? TikTok videos are really quite short. Yeah. Like, Not longer than two minutes. So you have to say something. That's, first of all, people want to be entertained on TikTok. That's what TikTok is for. It's entertainment. Mm -hmm. And businesses that adapt to what's called infotainment do really well. If you want to see some brilliant stuff on TikTok, and I mean brilliant, there, um, go look at the language app called Duolingo. Okay. Look them up and follow them on TikTok. Wow. They are funny. Um, and they came along out of nowhere and started doing, getting amazing results wow. based on their entertainment. Or Delta Airlines used to do our flights go to 3,000 cities every five minutes. And our planes are the newest planes. And the JP Power says, we're going to, that didn't work. So they started doing creative entertainment stuff and sales started taking off. So Delta does not creative entertainment things on TikTok. Yeah. Well, okay. Delta Airlines. Watch a couple of these things. Now, I'm not talking about all of the staged videos of, young man, you are under arrest. I am? Yes, you're under arrest. Hands out of the car. But, sir, all I wanted to do was, I want to marry you. Here's the ring. And, okay, that isn't going to serve you at all. Oh, that's, you know, you know whatever. But out of the dregs of stuff, there's some really good creative stuff. And coaches are getting on there and making um, really short things hmm. about, do you bite your nails? If you bite your nails and people make comments that are hurtful to you, it's relatively easy to fix. Just reach out to me and send me a message right here on TikTok and I'll get right back to you and we can take care of that. But you don't just have a talking head you do that. You might have, mmm, <laughs> delicious. Those nails are really good. You've got to be creative. Uh -huh. And that's what works there. Between, I would say right now, the most proven from what I see people doing is Facebook would be number one and YouTube would be number two. There were people who were doing really, really well on Facebook, switched over to TikTok and uh, switched over to YouTube and they're doing even better. As a matter of fact, you folks out there in video land, right before we came on, I said to Doug, take these videos, because we're recording on Zoom, even though you don't see us, and especially for those of you who get to look at me, you know, okay, so put this up, the actual video up on YouTube. And Doug said, well, no, I'll just have a picture of us talking in the voice of the background. No, put the whole darn thing up. Put the whole darn thing up and put all of your video stuff up on YouTube, but just make sure if you don't have it there, like we say goodbye, Doug would come in and say, 
Okay, well, you know, if you learn something here and you'd like to, by the way, you may not know this, but Harlan has been a coaching client of mine since the early 2000s. <laughs> and if you want to find out why, maybe get on the phone with me and we can talk about whether it would serve you to work with me as well. Thanks for that uh, plug. Let's, there. let's <laughs> say, let's say yeah. you wanted to do something about Havening. Did I get that wrong? Havening. 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 I always get that wrong. I know. Always get that wrong. So you would do a video about Havening and say, now, some people are interested in Havening because they have a problem and they would like some compassionate help with, um, or um, you're already a coach and you'd like to add this to your repertoire. At Right below this video, there's a link to fill out a form and it'll let you know whether you're interested in havening for yourself or um, in learning how to help others with havening. Very, very simple. Yeah. Videos on YouTube get around. The, just the main thing is to give it an interesting title. Like don't title it why you should hire me as a coach. Okay. You want to make it over a benefit that they would get. How to take your coaching income, how to increase your co number of coaching clients, um, how to get coaching clients without advertising. Things like that people are searching for every day. All right, now I'm going to pause and let you ask a question. Yes, thank you. Um, because we are, you know, doing this on <clears throat> on Zoom, seeing each other, t talking, although most people listening to this will just be simply listening to it. Unless, of course, I put it on onto, uh, onto YouTube. Oh, wait a minute. You, people uh -huh. aren't going to see the faces you've been making at me throughout this entire thing? Probably not, no, actually. And um, But, but. Because you did pick up my other than conscious communication that I did have a question. Um, how do you know, like, what is the right amount? Because what we're really talking about, I think, is um, is content prov providing. You're providing content on YouTube so that people are interested. It's like, well, that was really interesting. I want to learn more because I've gotten so much. I'm sure I can get even more. So that's when, you know, you're, 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 um, offer at the end of the video would be something that they'd want to take part of. Um, the most successful topic, the, the best topic for you to post, whether it's on Facebook or YouTube or anywhere, are client success stories. Oh. You know, don't mention their name. You might have to disguise it a little bit. But when you start sharing client success stories and, you know, going back to your entire career's coaching and you can you modify to protect the privacy of the person, um, that's where you're going to get your biggest bang for your buck. Okay. When people start associating you with client success, it isn't a very big step for them to contact you. And when you do put that, you know, thing at the end that says, and if you want, to, I mean, how direct of an appeal do you go? Do you just sort of make it say, oh, this is my email address. If you want more information, go here. Or do you say, you know, call today and I'll give you an offer of this or that? I mean, how? You how could say, um, you could say, call today um, so we can get you um, solving your your problems as soon as possible. But, you know. I wouldn't say call today and save a thousand dollars on my monthly package. Mm -hmm. uh, people go, this costs a thousand dollars. I thought it would probably be thirty dollars to talk to you on the phone. Um, but yeah, you know, it's interesting. I've been reading a book or listening to a book, actually both. I have, I have the book right here, and I've also been listening to it um, called "Building a Story Brand" by Donald Miller. Are you familiar with that? I have it. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's very good. And one of the things he's, he talks about is that, you know, many coaches, many people who are in the coaching or probably many businesses don't ask 
for the, the the sale as much as they should. And he says, you know, if you if you have a website that doesn't say, hey, click here and you know hire me now, um, people won't click here and hire you now. You need to have a very clear button that says press this button. Years ago, yeah. Although I hate to quote him. Um, there's a Bill Cosby routine where his kids go into the shower and every night the wife would have this war to get the kids into the shower and she would call upstairs and turn on the water <laughs> and use soap. Right. And Bill Cosby would go, because if you don't tell them what to do, they're just going to wander around the shower all day and not know what to do. So it's absolutely true. You have to tell people what to do. Right. I used to run ads, and when there, it's called a CTA. CTA means call to action. Okay. You literally need to tell people what to do. Click on the link below to uh, book an exploratory session with me. Right. And what he, what this guy, Donald Miller, was saying in his book, Building a Story Brand, was that he said there are basically two calls to action or something like that. I, I have to reread that section. But basically, two, one is, I think he called it a provisional call to action, which is like, would you like more information? And then there is the um, other one, other call to action, which is basically, um, do you want to buy this now? And he, he compared it to saying it's, it's kind of like um, dating. You know, it's like you're you're you want to ask your client to to marry you. You know, it's like, well, you want to get married. In other words, they're going to buy your product. They're going to commit to this, you know, relationship, to buying this coaching relationship, or whatever. So, so uh, a provisional r uh, request or call to action would be like, um, do you want to go out again? You know, this was fun. It was fun. Go to see a movie together. Do you want to? They do had it to have stolen this from me because I've been using this exact story. Well, then you really tell it so that we, so we all associate it to you. Go ahead. Okay. Well, I, I'm going to claim credit and go track that author down and tell him. Do it. Um, <laughs> it is, I tell the story of this guy going on a blind date. And he gets out of the car, goes up to the door where the date is, and the date uh, greets him. And he answers some flowers and oh, these are really gorgeous. Let me go put these in water. I'm just finishing my makeup and I'll be right back. Okay. And she comes back and just a jiffy gets in the car and he turns to her and says, will you marry me? And she, she like looks at him and goes, oh, very funny. Um, what do we have planned for this evening? And he says, well, I asked around your friends and they told me that you really like Italian food and you like dancing. So I have reservations and names the fanciest Italian restaurant in town and then mentions a, a, a club. And she goes, that sounds fantastic. They go to the restaurant and the restaurant is absolutely delicious. They walk over to the club. They have a really good time. And, um, did you have a nice evening? Yeah, I had a great evening. This was really fantastic. And she's thinking, you know, this guy has possibilities. He goes, okay, so would you like to get married? <laughs> and she looks at him and she goes, it really wasn't funny the first time. And it's not funny now. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, I'll just drive you home. We'll, we'll go home. And she's getting out and she's like, you know, he was really nice, but this weird business you know whatever and he walks her to the door perfect gentleman and he says i have one last question and she says no and goes inside and closes the door when you try and turn a first date into a marriage proposal it's not going to work the similarly when someone sees one video from you and they're like intrigued wow that was a great story wow he worked, helped that woman with that severe problem um they're filing it away in the back of their head they're looking they're going to click and they're saying do you have more videos people are checking things out more today mm, for sure. one video is nice 20 videos is even better if you 
do Facebook posts, the first one, you may think, you know what that guy Kilstein, that Doug interview, he's an idiot. I put up the best post in history and no one said anything. Let me tell you, there are people seeing it who want to see another and another and another. And when you keep putting these things out, I have a woman, I have a friend um, who is a coach and she posts, hey, one of my clients just made $35,000 after finishing working with me. And she'll mention the woman by name and talk about it and so forth. And she keeps putting this out. And people are saying, wow, people who work with her are really making money. Success stories are things that nobody can work with. When someone tags them in a post and mentions their name, it's probably a fairly decent um, indicator that they're telling the truth. After all, they're tag tagging someone. Right. This morning, I did another post, and I tagged our mutual friend, Kenra Cleveland. I noticed that one. About something that he said. Yep. And people are going, hmm, here's his description of who Kenra Cleveland is. And if Kenrick said this, it must be, um, it must be true. You just, I'm not even looking for anyone to sign up right now. I'm just keeping that stream going. Right. And at some point, you do ask. You do, you know, say after the third date, you, you, you know, you keep asking, will you marry me? Um, according to the story brand by Donald Miller. But eventually, you know, they, they're not going to ever marry if you don't ask them. Right. So you keep, keep giving content, keep giving content, but keep asking as well, because eventually they will say yes. But you th that is a really good point. If you do not ask, it's not going to happen. Well, I did all these posts on Facebook and nobody ever responded. Well, did you tell them to type me? Did you explain that you're helping people overcome problems like this, that um, you're really good at um at couples counseling and in your latest situation um two lawyers ask you to come into a mediation because they couldn't even sit in separate rooms without arguing and you went in um and spoke to the couples separately and whatever and they called off the entire divorce and just went on a second honeymoon you put 30 stories like that up and people go oh Maybe yeah. this guy really is good and maybe they can work with me. I know that if you are watching this video now, you care about coaching and you care about succeeding as coaching. And therefore, I recommend that you follow these steps because they really work. I didn't get out of bed at this point. Uh, whatever, it's, it's early, it's the middle of the day. Um, but these, these strategies work. A couple other little fine points. Check your spelling. You don't want to post something with spelling mistakes. Second, be, make your paragraphs short and easy to read. Yeah, yeah. Um, reading, One of the things I've always noticed about your, your posts, Harlan, is that your, 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 your paragraphs are like a sentence. And yes. Then, and then you skip a line in between right. every paragraph to make it readable. Yeah. But do not skip the photo. The photo is probably the most important thing. A lot right. of coaches put photos of themselves. If it works, great. I tend not to put photos of myself. I tend to put photos of the situation. So if someone has um, an eating issue, um, not that I would post this on my timeline, but I might post it in my group. I might have a picture of a woman sitting against a refrigerator eating ice cream in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. um, and because people who are overweight can relate to that, right. that theme, to that picture. You have to be inside their head. And let me tell you one more thing. Okay. And I say this on the basis of experience. 
is that so many coaches want to help people solve their problems. They attempt to solve their problems on the phone. Someone calls you, they're interested, and say, okay, well, listen, you know what? I'm not doing anything right now. How about you just close your eyes and let me do a free hypnotic session for you? And they fix the problem and they don't need you anymore. <laughs> don't do that. Get them to pay you. That's why you have to read the Stuart Wilde book. First chapter is, if they show up, bill them. <laughs> so that was actually going to be one of my next questions, is that if people go to your Facebook post, they type me in there, and you say, is it okay if I instant message you? And then you develop a conversation going on, probably over the phone or over Zoom or something like that. Or chat. Um, you don't give anything away besides a consultation at that point? You never do like a... Uh, Free session. Nope. Discovery session or anything like that? Well, my discovery session is essentially why they should work with me. They should discover whether we should work together. Okay. And how um, long they, they may have an issue. They may have an issue that I'm just not particularly qualified right. for. Right. Hey, Harlan, my wife and I are having a discussion on whether we should buy, invest in Bitcoin or NFTs. And I'll just look at them and say, you know what? I can understand that that's um, an issue, but Bitcoin and NFTs are a little bit outside my skill set. So I think that perhaps you could find someone more qualified. Cool. Uh, unless this is all about communication between you and your wife and the Bitcoin and NFTs or whatever. But if you want to get down into the specifics, that's outside of my field of expertise. People will respect you for that. And they yeah. may come back in the future. Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Hey, so um, I know we're running out of time here. In fact, we have kind of run out of time. And I appreciate your willingness to, to you know, be so forthcoming with all of your tr truly amazing expertise. Um, if well, somebody... We're going to do a test. We're going to do a test. I just step over Doug right here. And, and what? Like, what? So Doug is going to post a link or an email address. I am. And if you, yeah. And if you would be interested yeah. in working with Doug and me on growing your coaching business. Both of us together. Both of us together. See, Doug wasn't even expecting this. <laughs> I was not. It's a, go it's, ahead. <laughs> it's a surprise. See, um, just just contact Doug and say, I'm interested in it. Now, I have no idea whether there are people who would be interested in this or not. But I kind of like going through life and helping people. I have a I have a very stable business that you know I'm I'm working on. It brings in the income that I need. So I, I like helping people. And I really like helping coaches get started. So if you're interested, we could put something together, you know, a couple of weeks. Um, and and let's see if we can help you. Now, Doug has, I run a coaching program, and Doug has been very receptive about um, working with me and coming on and helping others. Actually, the session with um, Doug, he did two sessions, one about sleight of mouth and one about coaching in general. And these are the highlights of one of my coaching programs. So if I can help you with Doug, I would consider that um, I'm doing what I really like to do. Cool. So maybe there's interest, maybe there isn't, but we could put something together. Right. Back to you, sir. So what we're link? Uh, you talking about? Uh, I'm going I think to you put in some kind of a uh, link to your website where they fill in a form and indicate, okay. hey, I, I'd be interested. Okay. Just put your hand up. It doesn't obligate you to anything. Maybe you're interested, maybe you're not. But this is an example yeah. of doing what I said. Yeah. It's at the end. Throw out an offer. Good. That's it. I'm going to throw out an offer. I'm, I'm literally going to do this. So I don't have anything to say verbally right now, but at the bottom of this blurb for today's episode, there will be a link that you can find out more of how you can work with Harlan and me about what Harlan was talking about today. So, um, we haven't even we'll discussed it. This was a surprise <laughs> to Doug. Yeah. I wanted to demonstrate that. And while we're demonstrating it, why not put something together that yeah. would help you guys grow your business? Sounds good.
Sounds like fun. Well, thank you, Harlan Kilstein, so much for being here and for offering all this amazing information. I'm going to go out and at least get one of these books to start with and um, start seeing how I can do this myself. Appreciate it. Well, that's our show for today. Thank you so much for joining me. If you want any more information about today's show, please visit our website at www.essentialcoachingskills.com. Be sure to tune in again next week for our next episode and discover even more about the systems and the secrets that set the best apart.